ton of programs, including aquatics and and Renee, who does um, a lot of daycare and different stuff with the different with the kids in the new museum. So um, I just feel like they're the ones that I today wanted to recognize. I wanted to give them an opportunity. They're the ones that wipe the kids' noses every day, show the kids how to swim, you know, bring them a lunch when they don't have lunch. Um, Ben's the one cleaning the graffiti, and Jason's usually getting <laughs> yelled at by someone because the trees needs to come up or down. And uh, McMorrin, you know, they have a wide variety of fun over there, paint on the stage, whatever. But they're the ones that make things happen every single day, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank them. So thank you guys for all you do for our city. I really appreciate it. Why don't you have them stand and acknowledge <laughs> stand them? Stand up. I know they really want to do that, don't they? really don't like recognition, but you're going to get it anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go quickly just through a couple things going on in Parks and Rec. We're super lucky to have the great city we do and to have the millage um, that has been passed. And I just want to take a quick opportunity to say, like, we're blessed as a city. Like, with McMorrin, with the 23 parks, the beaches, I think sometimes we don't even realize how lucky we are. So, um, you know, our mission obviously is to provide recreation activities for all our residents. Um, this year, we taught over 800 kids how to swim, different swimming skills. Over 600 meals were served through Meet Up, Eat Up in the parks. 900 people plus live, um, participated in a variety of active opportunities. And 60 junior recreators, which are mid middle school kids getting their first um, you know, they're volunteering. So it's like their first work opportunity. Mr. Atchison still sends them their, his foundation to Cedar Point for the hours they do. And over 3,600 people, that's last year's numbers because we're not doing 24, but that's a lot of people to be touching in our city and some of the surrounding areas. Um, McMoran Place did over 11,000 in uh, shows and tickets sold in 23, 24 season. Over 14 theater shows, you know, um, Rob and I always talk about how um, we first came together as a team. We were hoping for 300 to show. We were hoping for that. And now, like, 700, 800 or sold out is, is the norm. Thousands of people on the plaza. I think it's really the place to be and making a real impact to our downtown. Um, we have 16 parks that have playscapes. And so far to date, we have 14 playscapes that have been renovated. That includes our 2024 builds. But that's amazing, and that's happening because, again, of our residents and the great support of the city council. And it's making a huge difference. Drive around the city one day and see all the kids playing, families, meeting their neighbors. And, um, you know, I think James said it best. I mean, it's, it's an economic driver, but it also brings people to our city to work, live, and play every day. Um, these are the three upcoming, coming in 2024. Um, so this fall, you're going to see Pine Grove Park win first, so just to our residents, um, don't get excited. We'll have a sign up, but after, after Labor Day, that playscape is coming down. You're going to have to give us the month of September, unless Ben's moving really fast. And then hopefully we'll have a new, our new playscape there. And in October, we can look for Sanborn and Harrison to be going in. So pretty exciting fall. We don't usually like to take down equipment in the summer, so... We're hoping to get all that done in, in the fall. Um, and we know we already talked about the uh, Project Play Champion, but that's happening at 16th Street. We've got a, a nationwide award for that, so great things coming there. And then just last thing I want to mention is we've had over $5, five million in grants received since 2016 in Parks and Rec. Um, and more than 11 million invested between city match, private donors, ARPA funding, county parks and rec millage, um, and every dollar of the millage that the city of Port Huron residents passed, we've leveraged with at least two times that much in, you know, in dollars and grants. So something to be proud of, not just for one person, not just for the team that's here today, but I think the whole city as a whole. I just, again, wanted to say thank you. Thank you for all you guys do to make these things happen. Thank you to the team, and um, we appreciate all you do. Well, thank you, Nancy, and thank you to the whole team. They all do a wonderful job. They deserve another round of applause. Yes, you get it twice you. tonight. <laughs> Mayor, uh, Mayor, I wonder if we can
could just stand and give them a round of applause because they're representing us and doing what we do. This is not showcasing. This is what we ought to be doing. So thank you all that you do. So make us all look good. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to postpone the other presentation for the moment. <laughs> yeah, I was looking forward to it. <laughs> well, okay. it has to wait. Oh, okay. um, we're going to move on to public hearings. To hear comments on the Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report, CAPER, for the 2023 program year. To review a copy of this report, visit www.porthuron.org. Uh, before I ask if there's anyone who wishes to speak to this, perhaps we could have someone come up and give a little highlight from it. Mm -hmm. so, sorry to put you on the spot, <laughs> but you were here, so. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. The 2023 CAPER is our year-end report. So our fiscal year ended June 30th, or report year ended June 30th. So all of the accomplishments in this report were from July 1st of 23 through June 30th of 2024. This will come before you at the next meeting for formal approval. Okay. Um, the plan summarizes all of the accomplishments for the program year and okay. what we spent the money on. Very good. I just wanted a little update so people yeah. knew what they would be speaking about if they were. So thank you. Thank very you. Much. Mayor, um, are there any highlights? Here. Sorry, I didn't have that. Uh, That's okay. I would say the biggest highlight is our increase in um, housing rehab. This year we served 28 mm -hmm. residents, households, and last year we served, I believe, 24. And we've also increased our Urban Pioneer program this year, which was surprising to me once I counted numbers for the year because of the way the market is. I was actually mm -hmm. expecting to serve less people. So we served 28 with Urban Pioneer as well. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think we served six more last year. I think believe we had 22 households. So both programs are being utilized. We're getting a ton of calls and we're spending the money, which is what we want to do. We also did a neighborhood cleanup in Harrison Point in the fall of 23 that counted for this program year. That was very successful. We served between Lapeer and Water Street and 10th and 17th. And we okay. did alleys, all the alleys in the neighborhood, bulk trash pickup. I know trash has been a hot topic. Mm -hmm. So we're targeting different neighborhoods. We're gonna move strategically based off of code enforcement referrals and residents who call and say, we need to clean up in this area. It allows residents to put bulk trash out when they otherwise wouldn't be able to. They can put out as much stuff as they want. There is no limit. So it usually happens on a Saturday. My next one is September 21st, mm -hmm. and we're going to be targeting the area between 10th and 15th and Oak and Cedar. Okay. So that'll allow the residents in that area to put out bulk trash. We're gonna do alleys in partnership with Eric and, and engineering department. And we also will do tire pickup, which is a rare thing to be able to get your tires picked up for free because most places charge you to recycle them so we pick up the recycling oh, fee okay. on behalf of uh, the residents and do they get notified yes they'll get oh, a letter okay. in the mail we have not yet sent them out right. but they'll get letters uh, in regards to their alleys being done and the opportunity to put out trash and tires thank you yeah very much Following that, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address uh, the council on public hearing number one on the caper? Seeing no one, we'll move on to public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council? Please come forward, uh, give us your name, where you live, and you have four minutes. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Fuchs, uh, 750 15th Street. And I'm here to advocate for Julian Ruck, mostly in the form of the tale of how I know him. Uh, I met him in my late teens into 20 years old, 
And we became friends at Denny's, uh, rest in peace Denny's. And, <laughs> um, and he moved away, I moved away, we came back. And I have been advocate him, advocating for him very quietly ever since. Um, he's, he's brutally honest. He will tell you exactly what he's thinking, exactly what he thinks of your ideas and how well he thinks of them, how awful he thinks of them, but he will always be moving forward to work towards something good and something righteous. And his new uh, uh, property, the new Polly's place on the south side, some people already aren't giving it a chance, just like they didn't give the first version of Polly's Place a chance. It was dirty. It wasn't growing in three weeks in. But I have believed in this guy from the start. I have put a lot of money into it. I have never asked for a penny back, although he will pay me. But to see him every day, he lives at my house. And I see him every day get up, walk out there, the 40 minute walk every day, and work on that garden completely by himself every single day. And to see what it has become, and to see how much he has done already, if you get a chance to get out there, please go out there, please, Look what he is doing. When he started the first version of Polly's Place, he said, I need like three seasons. And for him, it was an experimental garden. He, had, he was coming up with things on the fly, but he knows so much of how to do it. And I watched him go through the pains of this growing process. And I watched him figure things out, and what would work for that space until two seasons in, he said, I got it. I figured it out, and now I can grow this much, this much, this much. And he did. And then everybody said, no, he's not doing that. And then the winter of that season came, and he said, there's still kale growing out there. there there's, there's 100 pounds of kale out there. I can't get rid of this stuff. And he started giving out more and growing more. And then he got this new space. And I promise you, he is going to turn it into something fantastic. Uh, the Parks and Rec, oh, have disappeared. But uh, they have done a fantastic job. And Julian is doing something on a lower level with his bare hands. And any chance you get to advocate for him or support him, I encourage you to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julian Ruck, 750 15th Street. Thanks, David. Thanks for your ongoing friendship and <clears throat> support. Um, David and his wife, Marlena, let me live with them for free, seasonally, because they believe in what I do. And I'll tell you right now, Polly's place in this movement would not be where it is without their support, period. I often say he's the Samwise Gamgee to my Frodo in this journey. So, thank you. Um, so you can see we're wearing these shirts, Matchstick City, what's that? Well, it's been a while, but Matchstick City used to be a nickname for Port Huron. And it wasn't a good one. You can find it on the Wikipedia page as one of the half dozen nicknames the city's had. And it was given to the city by the surrounding area back when Port Huron used to burn down a lot, if you can imagine. From arson, bad infrastructure, etc. And I've been talking about a new brand that will hopefully bring the community together under one banner in a Port Huron versus everybody type vibe. And that's this. We have filed for trademark for Matchstick City. It's promising. Our trademark lawyer appeals within the next year. We'll be verified for that. Um, and uh, we've also filed as an S-Corp for Matchstick City Cooperative Incorporated. 
which is kind of a, the reason we filed as an S Corp is because it allows us to be a for business or for profit business that has a hundred up to a hundred co-owners. So workers cooperatives are things that are not very well known in this area of the country. But I will say I have had extensive, extensive experience working with worker cooperatives on the West Coast in my time there. I even had a radio show on a community radio station with a friend called Love in the 21st Century for about a year and a half. You know, I have been deeply involved in community building systems that this area is simply unfamiliar with. But what Matchstick City does is it creates a brand where people can buy t-shirts to support our gardens. You know, they can buy a shirt for each garden to support that specific garden. You know, I would like to see, as I've talked about, toothbrushes, mailboxes, there are things people in this community need to buy anyway. So if they know they're buying into something where 100 co-owners split 20% of the profits while putting 80% of the profits towards more community building projects, now you have something that isn't just creating 100 job opportunities or ownership opportunities, it's creating basically volunteerism with a kick to get a quarterly check. Hey, you painted a bunch of stuff for us this season, that's your job. You know, our, my friend Heather Lane, she's a great artist, so that's her role as a co-owner. You know, I got a friend, Russ Kovar, who's a builder. So he's gonna be a builder and that's his role. There are a lot of people in this community who don't like me, and they don't want me to succeed. But what we need to understand is should I succeed, I'm out of here. The people that hate me the most should be the first to buy t-shirts. <laughs> because when those hundred co-owners are all filled up, I'm gone. I have other stuff to do in other communities, and I would love to spread the matchstick method to other cities. I have stuff already lined up in Western Kentucky, in St. Louis, Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota, places I've already done work and I need to get back to. So please encourage our success. Help us succeed. And don't tell us to slow down. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the City Council this, this evening? Please come forward. So, my name is John Todd. I want to introduce myself. I've been sending all you guys the emails about the situation of the rentals. I've been a landlord for 14 years in the city. This consists of my violations in the last four years. I'm having a hard time understanding how I could run a business for 10 years. In the last four years, I've become a criminal. You know, none of this is gonna be fixed overnight. I understand that. There's bad actors in every situation of this, but this harassment gotta stop. We gotta move forward to benefit the city. I, I, I'm frustrated. Don't know what else to do. You know, I invested my whole life savings in this city. And every time I turn around, I just get another violation. So again, I sent you guys all emails. You have all my information. Can we just have a conversation of how maybe we could do things better? You know, you could go back 30 years in articles in the Times Herald that this has been going on for 30 years, way before this city council been here. And we didn't solve nothing in 30 years. Can we stop this and maybe try to do better for the citizens of the city? Thank you. Thank you. One other thing, I did notice Chris up there. Chris is working pretty good about trying to solve some of these problems, but okay. his hands are tied in most instances. He's doing what he's told. You know, I don't know how many conversations he has with you guys directly, but maybe you should talk to him about some of the hostility that, that goes on with these inspections. Maybe we could pass some ordinance to relieve the, the pressure. Thank you. Thank you.
Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the City Council this evening? Please come forward and give us your name, <clears throat> where you live, and you have four minutes. Holding Gothier, 11th Ave. Um, came here, busted down here, had to reschedule a few things, kind of messed up, I'm trying to clear my calendar for today. So actually, uh, I'm on a long break from work, but I feel like I kind of represent demographically a lot of people in Port Huron. I work a service job, pretty average income. Don't do a whole lot in the business sphere of things. I just, you know, I work, working guy. And so as somebody running for council, I just think it was disappointing when I got invited to this, you know, financial review with James Freed, and there was just the seven days notice. It, it immediately tends to exclude a lot of people from wanting to run and, and do set job because I don't know anybody here that's worked in a restaurant, you know. If I get an email on Thursday that says, meet at 10 a.m. next Thursday, the schedule's already posted, hold on, you can't change that. Can't. So I, I think that's really lack visibility of people like me. Um, I, I just, you know, I wanted to say that. When we do public comments, we get ready for a public hearing on some resolution going on. It's two to four weeks. James Street coffee hours, three to four weeks. So one week for me just plays into what I've been saying for a while. When you look at this council, it plays into keeping retirees, CEO executive types up here. A lot of you are pretty high ranking at your jobs and or are retired. And you have the time to commit to a seven day notice, 10 a.m. meeting. And I, I just think for visibility and inclusivity, maybe a little bit more notice for people would be great for those types of things and help to get people more involved. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the city council this evening? Hello, my name is Anderson Grandstaff, and I'm an attorney from Ypsilanti, Michigan. I just want to say that I'm one of uh, several people here who, are, who are in, have an interest in the uh, agenda number uh, BC number 24-002. And I know that the, the council is going to have that for public comment, and I just want to say that we're ready to and prepared to answer any questions you might have about that if, when that uh, comes up for discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there... Anyone else in the audience who wish, wishes to address the council this evening? I will declare public comment closed. And we will move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Mosierak. And you can take the vote. <coughs> council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Haremza? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mojarak? Yes. Council Member Pumperton? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Rush? Yes. Uh, items on the consent agenda received and filed notification from the Liquor Control Commission that an application has been received to transfer ownership of a 2024 Class C and SDM license to Port Huron Sports Bar located at 1934 Lapeer Avenue. Confirmed and approved single lot special assessments for the cost of an emergency board up for various addresses. Designated the voting delegate to the Michigan Municipal League Annual Convention. Approved the reappointments of Larry McNamara and Patrick McFarland to the Zoning Board of Appeals for terms to expire July 1, 2027. Confirmed the mayor's reappointment of James Dewey and Gary Olmsted to the Planning Commission for terms to expire August 11, 2027. Approve the appointment of Stephanie Ramallis as a life member of the Beautification Commission. Under ordinances, the second reading and enactment of an ordinance to amend Chapter 52 Zoning, Article 3 District Regulations and Article 4 General and Supplementary Regulations of the Port Huron City Code to change the site plan review process to be completed administratively through the Planning Department and the second reading and enactment of an ordinance to amend Chapter 48, Utilities of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances for the purpose of updating the chapter and adding Article 5, Storm Sewer Service. 
And we will move to boards and commissions number one. Receive and file notification from the Planning Commission regarding their decision to deny the request for the special use permit to allow marijuana retail at the property generally, generally described as 1814 10th Street. Council may choose to not accept the Planning Commission's recommendation and choose to schedule their own public hearing for September 9th, 2024 to take action on this matter. Is there a motion? Mayor Rep, I move that we receive and file the notification, but choose not to accept the recommendation and schedule our own public hearing. Support. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes. If I could provide a little history here. Yep. Uh, so several years ago, uh, the mayor and council were working on drafting an ordinance to legalize recreational marijuana. The mayor and council actually voted uh, and enacted a ordinance to legalize recreational adult marijuana. During that same time, an outside group of special interest uh, drafted their own ordinance and brought forth a voter referendum on it. Essentially collected signatures and got it on the ballot. Uh, that passed by more than almost 75% of the ballot. Okay, so 70, that's like 73% and change. I have to go back and check. But an overwhelming majority of Port Huron residents Signed, uh, voted for that ordinance. That ordinance usurped ours, it meant ours was moot. So the, we now have to live by the voter approved ordinance, okay? So we had a, when the mayor and council and us all worked together, we took our time to do a well thought out ordinance that would take into a lot of issues into, uh, into account. And this outside group, I would say, kind of hoodwinked people into thinking that we, we weren't having legalized marijuana when we were, and they got their ordinance in. With that said, the Planning Commission uh, must issue this special use permit. They have no real merit to deny it. And so if, the, if we let this stand where we deny it without any legal merit, we subject the city to litigation and we will lose if we get sued. And so we will schedule a public hearing. It will be my recommendation that this has to be approved because it complies with the ordinance and we, we simply have no legal right to just not do it. I know there are some people who don't like the location. Um, but that's something that should have been thought about when the ordinance was voted on and enacted, not after the fact. Uh, and so that is the reason why we are choosing not to accept their recommendation because it just simply doesn't match the legal test. Does anybody have any comments or questions for Mr. Freed? I know we did get uh, something from our attorney that yes. notified us that this is what we should do. So we do have that on the floor to receive and file it, but to uh, schedule a public hearing for September the 9th. One thing I should note as well, <clears throat> uh, we now have four or five recreational marijuana stores in the city of Port Huron. We have not had a single issue. Um, they're run very tight ship. We have not had crime issues. We have not had traffic issues. Um, they are really, to be quite frank, I don't know how they're all gonna survive. Um, some of them I hardly see anyone in. Um, and so we haven't, not, it's really not been the scary thing we all thought it was going to be pleasant, pleasantly surprised. Um, and so I, I have no issues with this. Okay, anybody, nobody has anything else to say, then we'll just take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Haremza? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mozrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. And we'll move on to item two. Receive and file notification from the Planning Commission regarding their decision to deny recommendation on the request to rezone the property generally described as 900 Bacon Lot Division Street from R1 Zoning District, Single and Two Family Residential District to a C1 Zoning District, General Business District. Council may choose to not accept the Planning Commission's recommendation and have administration prepare the ordinance change for consideration at the next City Council meeting on September 9th, 2024. Do we have a motion? Mayor Rep, I move that we receive and file notification but do not accept the Planning Commission's recommendation and instead schedule our own public hearing. Is there second? Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, this is all to do with the same yes. issue because it's the property right by it for parking, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else anybody else would like to add? No, I'd just like to, uh, yes. if I may, Mayor, uh, just to thank uh, your, our representative on the Planning Commission. I'd like to thank you and uh, the Planning Commission for going through all this. And it is, it is an arduous task, you know, especially when you don't have the, the uh, 
the, you know, the, the lawyer right there telling you, you know, raising those flags. So that's one point that we all need to try to work together because they do go through a whole lot during this planning commission trying to say, and then we have our residents, you know, wanting it their way. And it's not your way or my way. It just has to happen because of the legality of it all and the facts. So I just wanted to, to thank you, uh, thank you. and the other members. Thank you. There's nothing else. We will take the vote. Council Member <coughs> Ramza? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mozrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rapp? Yes. Um, instead of going on to resolutions, we're going to go back to presentations. And you know, I'm going to wonder why I'm doing this. <laughs> but, uh, Jackie, do you want to join me at the podium? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't show up in time, so. Let me open it for you. Open it. Yeah. It's an article we want to talk to you about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. so deeply and full of people who helped tell you stories, helped tell stories uh, that mean so much. So I, it just, it, being late Excuse to something me. like this, James knows I'm late to these meetings all the time. We slip <laughs> back and we come through what we need and we don't always stay the whole time because we have a lot of plates to spin. Um, so it doesn't really occur to you that I have to be here in time for this. <laughs> That's okay. We just kept um, postponing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, but I also am in, uh, deeply moved, and I, I really appreciate it. I, I know that uh, you guys don't always like it when we when, when we ask you when we write stories or ask you tough questions, but I'm appreciative that you always answer them, and um, and and that that means a lot too. It certainly makes our job easier. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Jack, before you go, I just want to say one of the things uh, I think uh, we take for granted in our community is having a local newspaper. All across the country, many communities are losing their local newspapers and local journalism, and that leaves the community to find their information from the sewer of social media. Uh, and our, our local newspaper is truly uh, a, a, a real blessing to this community. Um, I think we take it for granted. Um, I also want to thank Jess, uh, sorry, Jackie for uh, nine years. <laughs> I don't think I've ever swore to a person as much as I've sworn at you over the course of nine years. Um, and uh, just the absolute 
pain, but that's the way the founders wanted it. Uh, you asked tough questions and difficult questions, and uh, I remember reading your articles, and my wife goes, did you say that? I go, yeah, I think I probably did. She recorded it. <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't demand a retraction, but you've been an excellent journalist, um, and you've brought light to some very important stories that otherwise people wouldn't uh, figure out. So nine years to have a local journalist survive in this community is a pretty long time. I know that you have had job offers for more money in other cities, and you have chosen to stay here, so this is a community of choice, and so that means a lot to us. But I thank you for being a complete pain in my butt for nine years, but uh, <laughs> it was, uh, you, were, you were a great professional working relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on with the agenda. Resolutions number one. Authorizing 23 payments. Is there a motion? So, so moved. Support. support. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem okay. no. <laughs> And supported by Council Member Mosierak. Is there any questions on any of the payments? Then we'll take the vote. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? <clears throat> yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Haramza? Yes. Mayor Rapp? Yes. Uh, item two. <clears throat> Authorization to purchase, acquire, and construct improvements to the sewage disposal system and to publish notice of intent to issue revenue bonds. Is there a motion? So move. Council Support. Member Ashford, supported by Council Member Lamb. Madam Mayor and Council, this is a lot of money. Uh, it's, <laughs> we'll break it down just a little bit. Um, we have a host of uh, capital projects that have to be done, and our plant was built in the 1950s. A lot of major components are coming to their end of use life cycle, uh, so we need to begin planning. So this will be about a 36-month uh, list of projects. Uh, the notice of intent is for 19.5. We have to put the absolute worst case scenario. We don't believe we'll actually reach that amount, but should we get something catastrophic, I can't go back and change the intent. So I have to put the market on notice that we'll be issuing up to 19.5 uh, in bonds. Uh, they will be issued. We'll, do, we'll issue the bonds at different points, so there'll be a couple dominoes that will need to fall. We don't want to borrow all the money at once and say a project doesn't happen for 24 or 36 months. Well, then you're paying, you know, 4.5% on money just sitting in your account. So we don't want to do that. Uh, so there will be several issuances as the projects through design, bidding, construction, and completion. Uh, one of the major components will be between five to eight million dollars for the new odor control system that's being designed for the wastewater plant. Uh, so a large chunk of it is the odor control system uh, for the wastewater plant. But again, it's the screw pumps, it's the gallery pumps, it's retention basin, piping repairs, uh, the really important stuff in the wastewater plant. So this was, these were planned capital projects. Um, this was something we've been looking at for several years, um, and it will not require a rate increase to facilitate. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Freed? Yes. Uh, Mr. Freed, yeah, on these uh, revenue bonds, uh, what's the risk factor? I know there's some. What do you mean risk, risk factor? Risk when you, revenue bonds well, on the project, on the project itself. I don't, I don't understand the question. What you don't understand? No. Oh, you don't understand risk. We're getting ready to borrow all this, this so, money, so and we're, we're going the, we're, increments, we're, and I'm asking you for a risk. Yeah, the, the, Is the, there any risk to this? Uh, no, not really. So we have a, a, a payment plan in place, which we can afford. Mm -hmm. The rate would be to the bondholders if we were to default. They, okay. would, they would be they showing would, it. Yes, we would not okay. have the risk. Um, we will... We, as we design the projects and bid the projects, we won't pay for them unless we know we can afford them. Mm -hmm. uh, so as for risk, I'm, I'm not sure there's... Well, that is a risk. It, it's more so to them, but we're, we're, the intent is incumbent upon us, correct, as a city council? I, I guess I'm just confused with the question. Oh, okay, well, you, you yeah. remain be fused, confusing. Yeah. I was just saying, when you borrow, you always... Um, uh, think about the risk factors that are surrounding that when you borrow. Oh, money. Yeah, yeah. Anytime we anytime we yeah. borrow money, it's it's we take it as a serious thing. We've spent this has been ten years in capital planning. This has been three and a half years in financial planning, and so we assess to make sure we have a good plan moving forward that we can afford the payments in these bonds without burdening the rate the rate payers uh, to an extreme extent. And so we have been such good financial management within our within our utilities that we are confident that we can shoulder this and a plan for a decade for it. And so, and that's why the backup strategy, you're just not doing it all at one time. 
Well, we're doing it. We're, we're doing. We're we're borrowing it in different phases because the projects won't be done at the same okay. time. Okay. Okay. But it still give you that leveraging to track that, to monitor that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's all I really want. Okay. Mayor Rapp. Yes. James, do we have any idea on the timeline on the odor control system? Design is in process right now. I imagine design for the next six to nine months, then then bidding and then completion. I believe it's going to be 24 to 36 months from the time we started a couple months ago uh, until actual completion. And we are still designing in phases. Remember, there's three major components to that plant. Um, so the question is, we build three different major component, three different components. We do it all at once. It'll most likely include uh, carbon uh, filters, which is something used in industry standard all across the country, which makes me more confident because I don't like new technology where we're the guinea pig, like, you know, we have a sure thing. So about 36 months total. And do we have any backup plans or something we're going to do in the meantime until it's to help with the odor control until it's finally fixed? We've already begun those measures. So mitigation measures have already been in place. In fact, the complaints in downtown have dramatically dropped. I mean, there is a, you know, an off morning or something like that, but we are doing an internal treatment right now, pretty innovative treatment that we're using to mitigate, as well as closing the plant up. We don't have, you know, we're not leaving doors open, not leaving hatches open, especially on key things like Blue Water Fest and things like that. We can't idle the plant. So we're do the, doing the best we can. Um, the, pl the plant staff down there has just done extraordinary work uh, to mitigate this, and, and they know it's an issue. We all know it's an issue. You can't hide it. Uh, the thing is we've recognized it, and now we're taking the action to fix it. Thank you. And as we also say we reclaimed $1.8 million by holding contractors accountable, yeah. lest we forget that. Mayor up. Yes. Just a side note, James and I discussed this earlier last week. I've been down to the farmer's market quite a bit and asked the vendors about how they feel it, and they have no complaint of odor at all, at least on the Saturday of the farmer's market. And that was a big concern when we decided to do that. So that's been good news. So. The, farmers, uh, the farmer's market location is working out so well. Um, we are now in conversations about a long-term facility there, like pavilions. Mm -hmm. We're using the tents right now. The tents are fine. Um, but if we could do pavilions or a little bit more permanent structure there like other communities have, so that's something that's in the works right now. Anything else? We will take the vote. Council Member Mosherak? Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Hermza? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Mayor Rapp? Yes. Item three. Approving the sale of various vacant parcels of city-owned land. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Council Member Pemberton, supported by Council Member Mosierak. Did you want to say something about this? Um, yeah, these are just a host of properties. We're essentially a cleanup issue. We have the Dove Street properties are essentially wetlands, unbuildable yeah. properties out on Dove Street. That's actually in the township. A few of these homes were actually in the township that we're selling back. Non-buildable lots. I see a family in the back I spoke to. They're looking forward to getting their back lot. Uh, which means we don't have to mow it and get these off yeah. the city books. So, appreciate you taking it. Any questions? We will take the vote. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Haramza? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Mayor Rapp? Yes. We'll move on to ordinances number three. First reading, an ordinance to amend Chapter 52, Zoning, Article 3, District Regulations, Division 1, generally Section 52-162, Map of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances, to rezone eight vacant city-owned parcels between 25th Street and 26th Street from an R1 zoning district, single and two-family residential district, to an A1 zoning district, multi-family residential district. Is there a motion? So Su moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Mosierak. Madam Mayor and Council, this is uh, directly connected to the uh, development of the townhomes uh, that we entered into Michigan Community uh, Memo of Intent MOU with uh, uh, Michigan Community Capital Partners. Uh, so this is the rezoning of that parcel so that development can take place. We are hoping to get before Mishta in October. How does it look? For Good. 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 Very good. That's good. But it's a highly competitive, so right, you know, that's the problem. You just never know. You just never know. Any questions? We'll take the vote. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Haramza? Yes. Council Member May Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mojarag? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rapp? Yes. That concludes our regular agenda.
Uh, city offices will be closed Monday, September 2nd for Labor Day. And boy, that sounds terrible. We're gone for the summer. Um, next city council meeting will be on September the 9th. Um, I seem to be having trouble keeping track of people tonight because I wanted to say something about Chief Platzer, and he's not there anymore either. So. <laughs> Is he out in the corner? <laughs> I'm having a hard time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot, but I don't have anything to give to you tonight because we are having a separate celebration for, for you. But I did want to say for the, uh, the community, this is Chief Platzer's last city council meeting he'll be at. He is retiring, and we're going to miss you. And you've done a fantastic job, and you've served the citizens of Port Huron very well over the last many, many years. I won't even give you a number but many years. Uh, I remember, remember when you were hired as a cadet, so that's a long time ago. But we appreciate everything you've done for the community, uh, all the hours that you've had to put in, your family standing behind you, and I just wanted to let you know that the council stands behind you and wishes you the best in your retirement. And if anybody else wants to jump in, feel free. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Mayor and Council, I just want to thank you. Uh, it's been 36 years. Uh, <laughs> Forward to retirement. Uh, I also want to thank all of you for the support they gave me six years ago, uh, with the opportunity to become chief, city manager of Freed for taking uh, the chance on me, and it's, it's been a great ride. I can't believe that 36 years have uh, gone this fast, uh, but I appreciate the support, appreciate the citizen support here on. Uh, we've made, we have a great community, and they support the police department uh, very well, and, but the true heroes are the men and women out there right now answering the calls for service. My job's been easy for the last six years, but it's uh, men and women out there that's, that's doing the job that are truly the heroes, and I want to thank them because uh, we do have the best department in the, in the state. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. You get a little thank applause. You. Is there anything else to come before the council this evening? No. Mayor Rep. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Just going to let the community know of the, the fire station one has an open oh, house sorry. on Thursday at 5 o'clock. So bring the kids, bring the family. You can walk to the fire station. There'll be tours. There's, a, a, I think they bought like 400 cookies. There's special mm -hmm. keychains to the first, the people who show up early. There's commemorative keychains. Um, this is a huge investment in the community, and so we really want you to see it. And this is a, a big family affair, so bring everyone in, and you can just roam the building and see it. The kids will love it. Thank you. Councilman I just wanted to recognize two very special residents in the audience tonight and thank them for coming. So Lillian Pemberton and Victoria Pemberton, thank you for coming to watch Daddy at City Council and for putting up with all of the bedtimes that we miss on Monday nights for City Council. I think they should come right on up here. Oh, you guys want to come up? No way. No. <laughs> Victoria says Once yes. Says Lily's yes. like Once not so no. much. Come on. You can come up. <laughs> come right around here. You come over here. She's, you can go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The next generation. That's right. Yeah. Anybody? Maybe ever? some future council members. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So move, Madam Chair. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>